Hey guys, it's Trisha Carr. I have new exciting things going on with my Mystic Arts Academy. You can now subscribe to receive all of the live monthly content for about a third of the investment of a single class. Included are at least one downloadable guided meditation per month, two live events ranging from classes, channeled messages, group readings, intuitive development guidance, Q&A sessions, and tons of community. You'll also have access to a private Facebook community for fellowship and support, and this space is kept super sacred and high vibrational. Your subscription gives you access to the whole library of classes and live events, which are on a vast array of topics. All events are offered online by Zoom video call, and many are also offered live in person at my studio here in Los Angeles. Subscribing to the Mystic Arts Academy is also a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and engage on a deeper level. I'm offering the subscription at a super low rate of $22 a month. Joining now locks in this rate for as long as you're subscribed. Click on the description of this episode or go to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and click on Mystic Arts Academy. I look forward to connecting. Welcome to Charmed Life a multimedia podcast discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I am your host, Trisha Carr. Welcome to this episode of Charmed Life. I think this is about number 168, 168, and I am still doing my mini episodes between these long full-length episodes where I interview a guest expert. Right now, I am currently, as uh, this this is being published and broadcast, I'm doing a series on metaphysics of the Bible and having so much fun with it. So check that out on the podcast or on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Trisha Carr. And also just to let you know that the 2020 Intuitive Intensive 12-Week Immersive Program taught by myself and my wonderful luminous friend Crystal Ann Compton, who is an intuitive channel and spiritual teacher, we teach this program. This is our third year in a row, and it is truly, according to the students who take it, a life-changing program. That is not a, a, a brag or an arrogant for myself or for Crystal. It really and truly is the, those who come and connect with it. Last episode, Crystal was on. If you want to go check that one out if you haven't yet. And we talk about how to um, have a practical magic in your life and how to live intuitively. So um, click through the link that is in the description. You can read all about it. Pretty much the whole curriculum is up there. And I hope to see you there. And with that, my very special guest today is Corinne Grillo. She is the author of The Angel Experiment and founder of Angel Alchemy Academy. She's a trained psychotherapist, angel channel, healer, and teacher. She's helped thousands of people all over the world go from angel curious to angel powered. Woo! I love it. I'm getting chills. Welcome to Charmed Life, Corinne Grillo. Well, thank you for being here. It's wonderful to be here and and be amongst your good juju. Oh, thank you. Likewise. (laughs) Wow. I mean, you are, you have this powerful energy uh, to be able to, and I love that it's grounded, you know, because obviously the topic of angels is uh, high frequency, right? And, but the, the angelic connection or any connection with spirit is the intention would be for us to actually ground it because this is the experience we're having right now. So I would really love to hear about, I don't know, your journey and this amazing work that you're doing. I love angel alchemy. Yes, that's that's that grounding experience, alchemizing it into the physical. So let yeah. let everyone uh, know about, like, how did you get to, into this work and, and the work that you are doing right now? Yeah, well, first, I just want to say thank you for acknowledging the, the grounded approach. Yes. And and I, I really love that you said that and that you, you're acknowledging that because I, I know in the spiritual communities, there's sometimes not a lot of that. There's a lot of yeah. almost sometimes escapism yes. uh, when it comes to it. So I, I love that you're you're kind of anchoring down with me down on the ground. (laughs) Here we go. That's well, the name of this program is charmed life charm, meaning like magic, but life meaning this thing that we're doing, walking, making bodies. And (laughs) you know what I mean? Like that's, that is the fundamental. That is the primary experience of this dispensation of my soul energy. 
is this, yeah. you know? So exactly. yeah, it, it can be. And I understand that because we have this life is, is not easy. This 3D matrix is challenging and, and the work that we do uh, to be able to create this life, trauma, all of the things. And you do we kind of want to be rescued or to escape. And it's um, one time I was channeling Archangel Metatron and uh, as Metatron comes through very directly sometimes. And he said, you are your own rescue. <laughs> So <laughs> anyway, I'll let you take it away. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Oh my gosh, I could talk about that for a very long time. Um, seen a lot. I've seen a lot out there. Yeah. Uh, so that's so great. So yeah, you know, I was not born uh, born with the angel spoon in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> the silver angel spoon. <laughs> the silver, the gilded angel spoon in my mouth didn't exist. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, so, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of, yeah. a lot of BS that I had to really endure, go through as many, many of, of us, uh, healer, light worker types have had to go through our, yeah. our ordeals, if you will. And if we're lucky to survive and we get through the other side, then good things can happen. So that's essentially what would happen to me. So really I suffered with, uh, because of the intense childhood that I had. I suffered a lot with depression. Mm. Um, and uh, back in those days, really my only prayer was that that day would be my last. Mm. Um, so I just remember faking, you know, just white knuckling, faking it till I made it kind of thing and yeah. um, got into a lot of crazy high risk behaviors mm. uh, when I was younger. Um, but at, at a certain point, I started doing the the recipe that they give you for life, you know, and get a husband mm. and, and, a, and a kid, yeah. a house, a career. And so I managed to get all those things, but I, you know, the, the older I was getting, the more I was towing and, and uh, bringing in some darkness mm. and suffering because I hadn't really dealt with, you know, what was going on. So so that, you know, gives you a little synopsis of, of where, where things gone came from. And it really wasn't until my mid thirties that things started turning around for me. Mm. And when they turned around, it was really like a lightning strike. It was, they just, it, they just turned around. Um, and, uh, I witnessed a miracle that, that changed, that changes it <laughs> just changed the whole game, changed the whole world that I was living on all of a sudden. And it was such a weird time for it because, or maybe it was the best time for it because I was going through an extremely dark period. And, uh, I think I was like drinking about a fifth of tequila every two days. Mm -hmm. I was popping all kinds of like medications, like, um, antidepressants and ADHD medication. It just, it just burning the candle at both ends. And, and, uh, just the irony because I was a psycho psych psychotherapist at the time, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of keep me afloat. So, so yeah, it came at a time where uh, I I really needed it, uh, but it was not my most elevated moment. Mm. Wow, that's uh yes, that's the story that a lot of uh, healers, light workers, those you know I I was given once I actually think I have a YouTube video about it that that seeming phenomenon that people who are uh, light workers or healers or intuitives, you know, people who do this work that we do actually come in, we come in to dark family experiences, dark childhoods or something like that. And the at least picture that I was given that one time was like, that's intentional. Obviously, it's intentional because as the pre-birth experience soul perspective, we see the picture, you know, those people weren't perfect. <laughs> It wasn't like, oh, it's a surprise. <laughs> it wasn't until I was one year old that everything started to go bad. And they were, you know, church elders before that or whatever. <laughs> Picture perfect. But, the, you know, we go in because that is expansion. We go in with the intention and, and being able to alchemize, transmute and have that experience. It, it cleanses actually the dark family line if we when we make it through. And for me, it was also like in my mid late 30s that my kind of metaphysical opening started to happen yeah interesting yeah yeah um yeah that's so perfect yeah mm -hmm. i think it's you know yet got to be stretched and pulled and yeah. a little uncomfortable in order to to make something happen and you know unfortunately a lot of people don't survive a lot of light workers don't survive maybe they do end their lives or mm -hmm. um the the need for escapism is so great that they you know made it made a mistake there mm -hmm. an accidental whoops and so you know you and i and whoever else has or maybe someone's currently suffering you know it's 
so important to hang in there. And I, you know, I can't even stress how I didn't know that I had anything to offer anyone. Mm -hmm. And um, I just felt so low and such an incredible incredibly low self-esteem and I felt like a monster mm -hmm. most of my life. And, and uh, I, I just feel like uh, for anybody who's really suffering out there, sometimes the darker you can go, the brighter you can go. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a really interesting process, but you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to move through this without the um, essentially divine intervention and, mm -hmm. and, and working with the angels. Do you, are you, do you share what that miracle was? The story about that miracle? If it's, if it's private, that's fine. I just want no, to. No, it's in the book. Oh, yeah, okay. no, I, I write about it in. Um, and the in, book, by uh, the way, we haven't mentioned the angel experiment, or I think I did an, an, an mention it. So we'll have uh, yeah. Corinne's link for her website is in the description and definitely check out the angel experiment. But yeah, if you, if you would like to share it or if you want to keep, save it for the, for them to read it, whatever you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, we might as well talk about it now because. <laughs> Because whoever's listening, I, I feel like when they're listening to these stories, it helps open up the pipeline and the channel between them and the angels who are, mm -hmm. yes, standing right there right now waiting for you to pay attention, right? Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I was going to a client's house. I used to rescue gang, gang members off the streets in Los Angeles and, and do psychotherapy for them and their families. And, um, and I, I essentially... Um, you know, I already told you it was miserable. A friend of mine bought me an angel healing mm. for my birthday. She didn't know I, what I was going through back then. I didn't really share my, my, my crap with, you know, about what was going on. So she didn't know what I was going through. So she coincidentally, quote unquote, bought me an angel healing. And I went to this angel healing and it was really, um, you know, right away, the lady started talking about all the things I did not want to talk about. Mm. So she knew, yeah. she knew a little too much. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, I am not, I did not come here for this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting all sassy, yeah. but, but, uh, you know, I was intrigued because it was so beautiful. You know what the things she was saying, even though she was dropping down some truth, a little tough love here and there, yeah. but, uh, but really it was when she started doing the, the healing, the, the energy work and the healing work that I could start feeling something, you know, wow. feeling uh, the energy moving, feeling brightness, feeling, um, like there was definitely more than one person in the room with me. Mm. And, uh, and when I left that table and left that session, I felt like a different woman and, and, and I didn't quite know what to wrap my brain around with it. Like I've always been interested in spiritual things, but I, I always thought of angels as like, you know, they're like the biblical kind Religious. of angels. Like yeah, just, exactly. The word angel is associated with religion so much. I know, but you know. Yeah, but there, it's not that. It's not that. And, and we only have so many words. So, you know, I mean, like we can come up, we say light beings, but then people are like, what is that? So, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my perception, yeah. you know, obviously they didn't come to me when I was like, because I was going to church and, you know, I sure. was doing the, everything the opposite of what a pious person could do. Well, and when, when I was going to church, it, I was in evangelical Christianity. Angels were not a part of that. So, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just not a part right. of like the Protestant evangelical approach, t typically speaking. Um, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. maybe some other like catholicism i think they maybe they they kind of acknowledge angels or have that a part of the practice they do but, they yeah. do i yeah. mean uh, archangel michael like right. you know they they love they love them They're some saints, saints yeah. some saints yeah. so they're getting warmer right, <laughs> right. yeah <laughs> getting exactly. warmer but like intuitive work still maybe a little evil right you know <laughs> i have i have a friend who is an intuitive and she's also i have a few friends who are like both intuitive and mediums and everything and then also still like their old religion you know what I mean like they they like to go to church and they still like to use it as a tool yeah yeah and it's really cool but then they kind of you know they know that most people in that community of their church are afraid of what they do so they have to kind of usually live a little bit yeah, of a double life but one person interesting one, oh, sorry. One person named, whose Catholic friend she shared with said, oh, well, in the Catholic Church, there's something called charisms, which is basically the gifts of the spirit. And, you know, so it actually is there. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I love me some Catholicism, yeah. really. It's like the closest. I, and I grew up a little Catholic, mm -hmm. you know, a little Catholic light. Yeah. So, uh, 
So yeah, um, yeah, and I have a lot of my students or the people who have trained with me uh, in intuitive healing and doing angel work mm -hmm. that are walking that tightrope because yeah. they still love them some religion, mm -hmm. love them some Jesus, but they're getting activated. Right. You know, they're they're waking up and it's like, well, how do I rectify? Am I evil? Is this work evil? Mm -hmm. And so it's always been a fascinating conversation um, mm -hmm. when it comes to that. So, so there I was, right? And in one of the least pious moments of, of my life. And uh, as I was leaving the session, the woman said, talk to the angels as if they're real. Oh, and cool. I was like, at that point, I was like, heck yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Cause that was like amazing. What just happened to me? And so um, that's what I started doing. And Trisha, mm. all of this craziness started happening right away. It was like, uh, like the angel synchronicities. Mm. So I'm like, okay, angel, show me you're real. And I'm driving on the, on the, on the, on the road. And then this like laundry truck angels, you know, laundry service <laughs> drives right by. And so all these angel, like angels everywhere, all of a sudden, right. And they're communicating. Like I could feel this presence with me and I didn't really know how to describe it at the time, mm -hmm. but I felt lighter and brighter already. Like I felt like the transformation was kind of happening. Um, so it was about doing three days of this. And, and that's when I was on my way to a client's house. Uh, and I was driving through the streets, you know, of Pacoima, which is like the hood, yeah. you know, down, uh, down Latino in, in one of the Latino uh, communities down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was driving, a bird dropped down from the sky about pigeon size and dropped right in front of my car. And um, so I hit the brakes, you know, and no one was around. So I kind of drive around the bird. And I look at it and it's this bird with this mangled wing hmm. uh, just dropped like straight from the sky. It was so weird. And the other wing was okay. It was trying to kind of scoot around and, and get up. But um, so my heart, I, I felt like it was so like, not exactly the vibe I was rocking the last few days of like angel bliss, right? <laughs> Talking to angels, angel synchronicities. And all of a sudden here's this bird carnage on the ground. And what am I supposed to do with that? So I'm on my way to my client's house. I'm about to be late. There's an, I don't know, I'm not a bird bird, you know, professional. I don't know how to rescue birds. So I, and I was in the hood, so I didn't want to get yeah. out of the car and yeah, I didn't know what to do. Right. So what I did was, was what I'd been doing the last few days, which is talking to the angels. So I, um, essentially prayed for the bird and I said, angels, just help this bird, take it out of its suffering. And, and, um, you know, I just gave it some good juju and I kept, you know, walking, um, driving around it slowly. So I could keep sending it some good stuff. And I look in the rearview mirror and the bird started uh, doing a little shimmy on the ground. Mm. And so I just stopped the car again because it looked weird. So I just kept watching the bird. And as I watched a small bird jumped and fl flew out of the body of that bird. <gasps> and then a second bird flew out of the body of that bird. And they would, these were smaller birds, um, maybe about three inches tall versus the, the big one. And then a third bird. That was a little bit smaller, a little darker, a little wobblier, jumped up from the body of that bird and flew away. And I, I was like, okay, I'm in the middle of the hood in broad daylight. This is not a place where you're going to see stuff like this in my mind. So I decided to get out of the car because I don't care if I get shot today. I'm going to go see. <laughs> That's a <laughs> <the> bird miracle. <laughs> you know, I just saw a miracle. Maybe I could divide into three, fly away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go out, there's nothing left on the ground, Trisha. And I'm telling you, it was like electric. Like my hair is like, Zzz. and I, I felt, I don't know, the, I still don't have a word for this, but it was like an intense, so much beyond the word love and, and uh, this incredible presence with me. And I knew that moment that I had witnessed a miracle and, uh, and that changed me. Oh my gosh. That's uh, and so have you inquired, like, I'm so fascinated, almost like, what, how or why, what was the significance, just maybe that, what was the significance of, of the story of the love changing into three different physically, physical incarnations, the three know. different births? I mean, talk about grounded, right? Like, that's just <laughs> yeah. like a body yeah. <laughs> divided into, into three healthy bodies and flying away. Okay, so here's, I didn't know what to make of it, okay? Yeah. But you know what's so interesting? One of the things that the lady told me mm -hmm. when she was doing her angel healing, she touched my shoulder and she said, she said, Ooh, 
okay, you have a bad shoulder mm. and she barely touched it. So she's not like feeling my muscles. She's just yeah. feeling like this the energy. energy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, God, it gives me problems, giving me problems my whole life. She said, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. You're carrying a lot of anger here. That's where your wing was clipped. Oh my gosh. So it was you. So there's this, I mean, I didn't put that together until way <laughs> sure. later. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like I'm like, Hey, Hey bird, mangled wing. I have a mangled wing. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, but you know, the, the Holy Trinity, you know, mm-hmm. the three, yes. you know, you can just go on and on with that. So I, you know, like all spiritual awakenings, I don't think there's one angle. I think it's just yeah. whoever's hearing it mm-hmm. and whatever it means that day, it's like an infinite tarot deck. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it wasn't just that miracle. It was what happened afterwards, right? The mm-hmm. transformation in my own mind and my own heart in my health and my body. And it was like the first time maybe in my life that I could hear a different voice inside of me mm-hmm. that had hope mm-hmm. and um, that believed in something bigger, believed in, in uh, not just spirit, but believe, started believing that there was something more for me mm-hmm. on how to live um, in, in how to live. And, and, and I started kind of doing life a little differently. And just like these little mini shifts along the way. But yeah, after that, I felt like the communication <laughs> pathway was open yeah. and, um, and slowly, but surely I received guidance to, to kind of step-by-step step put me in a place now where I'm uh, reaching, you know, thousands of people all over the world and, and helping them heal their lives, mm-hmm. heal their hearts, and activate their mission through the power of angels. Wow. And so the angel experiment, is that essentially, is that kind of about that, you know, talk to the angels like they're real? Is that the, is that the encapsulation of the title of your book? Like It's is- essentially, yeah, yeah, it's a, um, it's a 21 day mm. uh, angel ritual um, that has uh, invocation. So each day there's different archangels that you invoke mm-hmm. uh, versus just pray. We do invocation. So mm-hmm. it's very um, kind of ritual, but I do a lot of healing activation. So after my big angel experience, when I was sitting with clients, I'd start feeling a bunch of angels come in the room mm-hmm. and I didn't know how to rectify those two things. You, you know, mean, it's like, were, okay, I'm going to do talk therapy. As a, yeah. And in, in CBT or something like in, in, psych, in your psychotherapy practice still, the oh, angels are coming in. Let's do some CBT. I don't think so. <laughs> and, you're like, I don't think- and you're not a transpersonal psychologist or psychiatrist. So people can. No, of, I was not. Yeah. I was not doing that work, Mm -hmm. but it was happening inside of my sessions. And it took me a while to really start owning it, of course, because, Mm -hmm. you know, trained psychotherapists, like, come on, stop it with the whole angel thing. It's ridiculous Um, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But so I wanted to keep it my like dirty little secret in a way. And I didn't tell anybody about the miracle because I'm a psychotherapist. So I understand Mm -hmm. what that means when you say, hey, I saw a bird divide into three. I know it sounds crazy. And I know they they might want to put me on antipsychotics. So it it took me a while to say it out loud, but it was happening in, in the sessions. And so eventually I started just going, Hey, we're going to do some angel healing work. And so spirit kind of guided me on, on how to work with people suffering and Mm -hmm. how to start moving that energy out of them so they could live. And I, I I wonder, I imagine that as that was happening, you were probably aligned with clients and you were guided in a way that it actually worked. Like you knew the words to say that would bridge their awareness or their understanding of, of angelic presence or whatever did that is that how it worked out yeah I mean yeah you know here's the thing is that I feel like anybody who's suffering just wants a way out and they'll try anything right exactly you know no one's gonna kick the angels out of bed if I go hey you want to try something (laughs) so that's how I would do it I would you know I because I'm a very down-to-earth person I would just say you know you want to try something really weird let's just try it Mm -hmm. and and by the way can I just give you a message (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yes, please. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. And so, of course, as you know, you know that people are ready for this kind of stuff. They need magic. They need Mm -hmm. uh, faster ways to to healing uh, and to getting activated at a soul level to step into their mission and and just drop the crap. Just drop the crap. We need methods. And some people don't want to freaking spend 10 years in therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love therapy too. It's just sometimes people just need to be healed. We need, we need to use all the tools, I think. You yeah. know what I mean? And if we isolate too much, which is like what we well, – some of the pendulum has, has swung to where we're a little bit too austere with what psychotherapy means or with what um, 
allopathic medicine means. We need all of it. You know what I mean? And we also, like you said, we don't want to isolate so much to where we're just like ungrounded, you know, spiritual bypassing, (laughs) not wanting to be a part of this life. I want to get out of here. I don't belong here. Kind of, you know, nobody understands me. Oh, yeah, exactly. Nobody understands anybody. (laughs) (laughs) it's uh and of course in miracles one of my favorite things to remember is i know they i don't remember where it is in the book but it's like all of god's children are special and none of god's children are special you know what i mean it's like it's snow it's like we're all fractalized but and we all have um i don't know but but i guess maybe there are people with certain missions like light workers where you do actually tend to feel off the bell curve a little bit more than than some others and if you and if you have like extreme trauma then that is that is more extreme it is extreme than than maybe hopefully most of the population but even in even in the more if something is could be possibly more typical as a life or as a as an experience of growing up we experience trauma no matter what because it's the perception of a child's mind. You know what I mean? Like it's not just you had to be hit or physically injured. If a child feels separation from their caretaker, they, that's that's trauma. They experience that and they make the, the mind will make meaning of that and potentially create a pattern around it. It's just how it is, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, you're a psychotherapist. <laughs> we all we all got the trauma because uh-huh. coming back into the body and, and coming into this three dimensional, this density, this yeah. level of density is, is quite painful, yeah. you know, so we all have it. Yeah, and we all kind of have a sense um, that there's something more, something else mm-hmm. that maybe we're not originally 100% from here. Yeah. Um, but how we wrap our minds and, and framework vision around that is you know we can do it differently but yeah sometimes wow the the people who are just about to crack open are just the leak least likely in your mind mm. that you actually have some gifts and something to offer so I didn't know that I could do healing work right. you know that just came that came with the angels mm-hmm. um I mean although I was always interested in stuff like that but I you know <laughs> with the traditional education route because you got to be practical after all right well and but the traditional educational route that you took was as a healer i mean a psychotherapist is a healer so you know right. like you always knew <laughs> there was always was this close yeah <laughs> you know but it, yeah i just feel like we're always in a sense fulfilling our purpose and our mission but mm-hmm. we're playing it at different iterations and different octaves and different awarenesses yeah. of what it is yeah. or different perspectives of our awareness of it yeah. maybe you know yeah yeah exactly but i just think you know with the whole mission thing and life purpose thing it's it's really who you are you're, mm-hmm. you're just you don't have to work hard to fulfill your mission you're doing it yeah. it's just the frequency that you're going to put out there like what level you're going to play that game mm-hmm. um so yeah i was warm with just the mental health but then a new layer dropped down yeah and so the so then you said little by little you started to integrate just changes shifts into your life and so was there some kind of interesting or sh- you know actual shift i mean you did you shift out of the practice of psychotherapy entirely and this is the work that you do now oh yeah this is what i do now yeah i mean i, I, mean, I thought so but it's pretty it, insane but yeah. i don't even do you know i don't even do a lot of one-on-one anymore i mostly teach and train mm-hmm. um and create create angel things for people to participate in. My main mission is to really help connect people to an act, like to a palpable relationship with spirit, as opposed to this, just, just faith. And just, you know, I needed, I needed, bam, whoosh, a smack upside the head, a cosmic, <laughs> cosmic slap to like, let me know that there's something going on. And so I love to create environments for people to actually experience uh, what I'm talking about, what, whether it's, um, doing these practices, it helps boost your, your synchronicities, helps boost your healing and all of that stuff. So that, and, and I'm right now, I'm just called more to reach more of the masses and doing it. So, um, but I'd like to balance it out, you know, a little bit. I love to teach and do workshops and do retreats. I'm doing a retreat um, in California up here in uh, February. So I, it's, you know, but yeah, this is mostly what, what I do, but it took me a while to, um, to really embrace where my career was headed, if you if you will, I imagine. And was that transition uncomfortable, or how did the, how did that work for you? Because sometimes it's like transition almost it, it's uncomfortable for us, no matter what, right? Because change is yeah. is 
difficult for the physical body and the brain. And it's almost like if it happens slowly, that's difficult. And if it happens quick, that's difficult, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but I, I, I think your story is probably very inspiring to people because there so many people do actually awaken a little bit more mature in life, which is a, a actual quite a gift. But you have a thing already set up. You have your gigs set up. So, you know, I'll bet that you're quite an inspiration to be able to shift the life to that is aligned with that purpose. Um, yes, I, I, I support a lot of people in, in making those power moves, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know I was making a power move. I thought I was just like, hey, I'm just going to go follow the party, whatever the party leaves me. <laughs> I like it. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's yeah a good but, you know, but, it, you know, mantra. I can be more cavalier about it now. But, you know, back in the day, I mean, it starts with little things like, mm-hmm okay, I have this miracle happen. I'm doing angel work, whether I like it or not. I'm doing it on myself. I'm sending stuff to family and all the, you know, whether they know it or not, I'm doing angel work. Mm -hmm. But am I going to kind of admit it out loud? I think that was the next thing. And then I remember the first, I went to like one angel training and it would have cost me, I think it cost about $3,000, $4,000 altogether because I had to fly somewhere and I never did anything like that. I never took myself anywhere. And I had a four-year-old at home um, we were, our house was going into foreclosure. Oh my, gosh. Um, my marriage was on the brink of divorce kind of thing. Um, but I was still partying because, you know, the <laughs> angels were kind of coming to support us. Yeah. But uh, I remember going, I, I just felt like, oh my God, I totally want to go. I look at the price and I go, oh my God, I could never go or mm. can't do it. But then some synchronicity started happening and, and, and like, you know, the, the city that I was like this workshop in Kona. So like all of a sudden I'm here in Kona everywhere on the day. And I was like, oh my gosh, I hope that's a green light. Maybe I will go. <laughs> so I told my husband, hey, I'm going to spend about $4,000. And uh, um, it's just like, it's just kind of like a four day angel fun thing. Mm-hmm. It's just fun. You're going to do anything with it? Absolutely not. Hell no. Yeah. I'm not gonna do, what am I going to do? I'm a therapist for Pete's sake. <laughs> but I just felt like I had to go. So it's like, but I, so I did, did go and it was amazing. But it's those little things that you start saying yes to that eventually lead you to your journey yes. and to your deeper journey. So, so yeah, I think for all of us, it's learning to pay attention to those inner urges that seem mostly like a party. It didn't seem practical. Mm-hmm. And that, <laughs> that's such a great reason to do it because obviously we, we were, we've been talking about grounded and practicality and everything. But the thing is, there's also so much to just doing it because it feels good and just yeah. staying in that vibration and continuing to stay in it for that reason, just for the love of it, just for the fun of it. And mm-hmm. stay out of fear for having done that. Try to stay out of guilt for having yeah. done it that way, you know. And it's, it's uncomfortable. I mean, in that case, it was financially uncomfortable for us. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to walk the path, the intuitive path, I feel like it's all about discomfort. Yeah. It's it's so uncomfortable because often you're cutting pathways you've never seen have modeled for you before. And, and you, your, your relationships are challenged, you know, and how you do relationship is challenged. How you do finances is challenged, how you do life period. So it's very scary. So when it came to my career, uh, yeah, I was up against like, Oh my God, they're all going to like laugh at me and like, think I'm just, you know, just dismiss me because I'm talking about angels. Uh, and some of them really did, yeah. but it didn't matter to me because um, I knew what was happening down on the ground in my practice. And I'd rather help someone in 20 minutes than 20 years. Yes. And so, and, and also over time, those same people who used to like kind of roll their eyes at me are, are calling me for business ideas and business support. How did you transition your business? And it was one crazy step at a time essentially yeah wow that's incredible it, and that's what it is it's it, it just to be present with the step and there's if it's there now if it's you know where you're on your transition and the career or whatever it is you have going on is is with you right now then there's something that it's offering you obviously you had so much so many skills so much uh, so many tools from the psychotherapy practice and the education that I wonder, I know for myself, because I've done career transitions too, it seems like I, 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 I don't know if I'm done transitioning. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, I feel like in five years, I'm like, oh, it's time for a new career. <laughs> uh-huh. totally. And I'm like, I'm here for it. Who cares? Whatever. Um, but you know, I, I, I now like find myself 
resourcing from something that I was doing that is, for example, like I was in the hospitality industry. And so I'm like, can resource being a bartender when I was 28 now? You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I learned this skill and I can use it in my practice now to heal people. <laughs> I don't know. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, you, you're, you, yeah, you, you tap your resources and I mean, you know, the, the longer you go in life, you, you really see there's some, some wisdom and mm -hmm. there's some kind of wisdom and some of the, just even the worst things we were doing back, yeah. back then. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like when I hopped on, not just a spiritual path, but stayed committed to following, uh, the intuition as best as I can, mm -hmm. especially when it's starting leads me into tricky, uncomfortable territory that I, I have an obligation now to listen. And the reason why I say I have an obligation is because I didn't know by taking all of these risks, right. Getting uncomfortable, uh, spending, investing $4,000 in a training I thought was going nowhere. I was just going to have fun. Um, and dropping my psychotherapy one-on-one uh, -on -one practice, that was super scary when I when I eventually made the move. Right. Uh, it was terrorizing, to be honest. Mm. But what I what I couldn't see was the thousands, tens of thousands of people that were waiting yeah. for the work that that I I bring with the angels. And so now it's like, who else is waiting? And we have obligations. Mm. Like when, when your, when your broadcasting is done, it's time to go and do something else because there's other people that need you. Yeah. And so, um, so if anybody's, you know, listening, some, you start feeling that trap, even with good things that are happening. Yes. I don't know if you know I what know I'm what talking about, mean, Trisha, totally. you start feeling called to let go of even good things. Yeah. And you're like, wait, that doesn't make sense. That means that I think that I have to think it's bad now in order to let go of it. It's like, no, actually you don't. That's when you kind of are really uh, cooking with gas. <laughs> and it's like, it's time to release something, even though it isn't limiting seemingly, you know what I mean? Like, or it isn't uncomfortable, negative, bad, whatever it is, because that's how we're conditioned. It's like you stay in something until it's so painful and then you have to fight in order to get out of it. And it's, eh, it doesn't have to be that way. What if we I know you have to set it set the building on fire in order for you to <laughs> finally be able to leave. <laughs> totally. And what I was actually given, because th when I had my kind of meta bigger metaphysical awakening, I was in the middle of a career that what I had called my dream career. And it really mm. and truly was then. And, but it started to shift, you know what I mean? Like to be something that I was leaving. And what I was told by the angels then was you can go from glory to glory. And I was like, oh, well, that's preferred. I love that. <laughs> glory to glory. Yeah. See, I say party to party. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's my next party? But yeah, I love that. Yeah, it was a very pe peculiar thing that I noticed um, over time. And I think because in the beginning of your spiritual awakening, you're really letting go of officially toxic things, whether yes. it's a, a right. toxic relationships and all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. But once your plate is cleared, mm -hmm. then you actually get to experience what it's like to just outgrow something because your soul's ready to expand a little bit more. Yes. And it's such a mind uh, trip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, I know what you're going to, you could say it. <laughs> so oh, I can. Oh, I've been like cleaning up my ass. Oh, it's you know, a mind fuck, I, girl. <laughs> I don't know if you catch me going, okay, is it, can I say shit or shiznit? I'm not sure. <laughs> can no, I shiznit here? Or oh real. God. Okay. So back to, back, back to the mind fuck, right? Yeah. It's, it's a mind fuck when you really have to um, let go of amazing things. So my one-on-one yeah. -on -one practice was like super awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, busy mm. and and I had, I loved my clients and I was making some decent cash, right? Yeah. And, and you were helping them. people. So you're like, it's confusing. Like, I'm helping I don't get people. Yeah. People are having literal miracles happen, yeah. magic happen. What could freaking be the problem? So I'm thinking, I'm just a freaking baby. Quit tantruming. <laughs> you should be, feel grateful. Feel yeah. grateful for your life. Why are you feeling trapped by it? You know, you need mm -hmm. to like simmer down. Yeah. And so I spent maybe two years just in that game of like, just pretending like I wasn't feeling that trap. Mm -hmm. um, but really there was more people and you can only serve so many people one-on-one -on -one in a week. I could yes. only do like 15 or 20 right. versus, you know, yeah, I don't know, lots. Well, and uh, it, it's different. There are different modalities. There are some people, well, because when you service those 15 to 20, then they're touching the lives of the people in them. You know what I mean? Like exactly. it does spread out, but we just have different 
different modalities. Some people, that one-on-one, -on -one, that intimate thing is their thing. Maybe that's their thing forever and ever. But forever, for, it could be. Yeah, but for you, the, the, it was there's an evolution that meant that you go to oh. more of the group. And I, I love the group. This is why I do this, because we, yeah. are, we are touching and experiencing and connecting with countless people and we I can I know you can too feel them all you know we can feel them all even the ones who are going to listen to this a year from now you know what I mean like we can feel them all and this is all we're in that space so anyway we go, yeah so you yeah. you needed to you were evolving to that's the thing when the when your foot grows then the shoe doesn't fit anymore it doesn't mean that the shoe was bad <laughs> it doesn't know, mean that the shoe didn't serve you you just are are moving into something else Exactly. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, want to just say that to, mm -hmm. to people who are having things that are actually totally working for them, but they're mm -hmm. feeling that inner pressure. Um, and that is often guidance that it's time to let something die, time to let something go, because there could be something not just good, but extraordinary on the other side. It's like you get to a point in your life where instead of being, instead of being the, in the no, like I have to I have to say no to that you know what I mean that you start to get into this place where it's yes and <laughs> you know <laughs> what's the yeah like you say the next party how can this party get even better the what, next glory mm -hmm. what's the next glory <laughs> I love it oh so good so good yeah. so yeah it's been a lot of a lot of that a lot of making terrorizing you know part of me terrorized actually so much of my current career I still find terrorizing mm. but the more that we train ourselves to go uh to coexist with that fear not you don't have to <laughs> I know a lot of people waiting for them to stop being afraid themselves they want to stop being afraid oh, right. in order to get something done don't wait mm. just be terrorized big deal you've been through worse more than likely and be terrorized and also watch the support come in when you start making those moves which yes. has been so cool have you found that too oh Trisha? yes absolutely you know it, it is and it, it does still it does keep unfolding and where you it really is like being in suspension you know what I mean like really just being so being in the now and and choosing to choosing to embrace perfect synchronism as your birthright and your lifestyle that's like being in that's like being suspended in space you know it's like no longer no longer feeling gravity in the same way that you used to uh, because the density was the gravity before and it was all it's almost like breaking the addiction to either depression or anxiety because that was the conditioning that you had that made you feel like that's how you survive because that's what it was to go from age zero to 25 was depression and, and anxiety. And so that is what the body and the brain believes is what mm. is the homeostasis that is somehow you're surviving by. And so it is like an addiction. So then when you actually break that addiction, then you are in this place of, uh, I mean, it's faith, but it doesn't even, it's not even faith after a while. Cause once you do it, you have so much evidence that it becomes proof it's proof you know what i mean it's proven it to just, you to live that way exactly it just becomes life like yeah. it's just like normal normal life and i i feel like you know your healing and transformation doesn't have to be long or hard or ar arduous I, I feel like especially in working with angels because they work at just quantum speed sometimes yeah. oh yeah but uh but yeah i really had no idea i mean i knew i was suffering when i was you know back in the day um but I think that most and many people, they are so silently suffering, even to themselves. They don't even know yeah. they're miserable because they're so used to it. You just become numb uh, to it. And so I know like in my, in my practice and also with the uh, intuitive healing work that I'm doing now and teaching is like people have a radical experience, sometimes just in that first session, because it's like the first time they've taken off the density and they scrub themselves, you know, we scrub them down and then they can feel themselves again. Like, yeah. wow, I was walking around with like 500 pounds of crap. I didn't have to walk around with. I didn't even know it was there. Just yeah. got used to it. But Started then you, walking through you, life with my shoulders down. You emerge strong. That's the thing. Oh, you know, Marianne Williamson says it so well, because I've heard her say that the mental and emotional uh, like suffering and challenge is actually the gravity that we push against to make us stronger, like a weightlifter or like a, a, a yogi who is pushing against gravity to build those muscles. And then you emerge even stronger. And I just think that's such a perfect I example of, yeah, me too. And I, I want, I feel like I want people to hear that and that the pain or suffering that you 
may be carrying that density that it it really and truly the 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 second that you start to open yourself up to allow it to heal and like maybe with relationship with alchemizing with the angels it actually gets better you don't have to avoid it that the second that you give it the space for healing it gets better immediately and like mm-hmm. you said at quantum speeds i've some of the fastest i remember one time being so angry because I didn't know how to release unforgiveness for some childhood abuse and I Mm. didn't want to be walking around with that that resonating with that anger and that you know unforgiveness Mm. and I I banged I was driving and I stopped and I banged on the steering wheel and I said I don't know how to do this but I'm willing to do this and I was calling out to angels and it suddenly it was like easily just gone then you know like poof I know. Yeah. I I forgot about it. And I looked, I felt into it, like remembered the experience like a month or so later. And I was like, oh, I don't feel it anymore. It just happened when I just was willing. Yeah. Yeah. So people think forgiveness is just like this mental exercise, but it's not, it's an energetic Yes. that you don't have to lift. You don't have to just decide to forgive someone. You can just like decide to let it go, but have support. So Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, I think one of the most remarkable things I found in working with spirit, working Mm -hmm. with, with angels is like, you know, you don't have to freaking do it by yourself. Just ask for help. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And it's there and you're believing that it's there is your receiving that it, you know, the help that's, that's what, and you don't even have to perfectly believe it. That's the cool thing. You don't have to be perfect in your understanding, your belief, the, how you're running your frequency, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to be pure. You don't. You don't, you Mm -hmm. don't, thank goodness, because I never would have made it here if you did. (laughs) And I want something else I wanted to say about angels that I love about angels and what they've showed me is that they are beyond religion. They are not associated. And we know like every culture around the world, whether they're indigenous cultures or not, or major religions talks about some form of being of light, Mm -hmm. benevolent beings, and so for people who do not identify with religion, I like to like deconstruct that angels are religious. They're, they're not, they're, they transcend hum, the, what humans do to wrap their brains around and make sense out of this place. They're just here to help right. and support us. And they don't care who you are. Right. And then the, like the names that we have for them or the words that we have from them, those are just benchmarks. And those are just ways for us to refer back to the same energy from these human vessels. But again, they are they are not constrained to any of those identities if you did grow up in a different language or system or culture or something that you it would be this it would still be michael just be called or something i don't know <laughs> yeah. like the frequency that matches yeah exactly it does yeah. not have to be um uh, yeah, I was actually talking to someone who uh, was Hindu. So he studied a lot of the, the Hindu faith and was really, and he was reading the angel experiment book and talking about how the, the similarities between some of the deities mm-hmm. and um, the angels. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's really, it's for, for, that's what I love about angels. They're for everyone. Yes. And, and people aren't angry at angels, right? They're, they're, a lot of people are angry at Jesus. Jesus has had some really bad press over the years. <laughs> bad press, yeah. <laughs> You know, so we need to get him a PR machine behind him and, you know, get, get, get the real Jesus flowing sure. uh, so people can make that connection. But if unfortunately so many people shut themselves off from religion because of, you know, the last, you know, thousand years yeah. um, of, of kind of some, in some ways getting, getting the Jesus wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I love me some Jesus, but you know, there's, there's, so I love uh, angels because no one has a huge problem with angels. Right. Right. It, it's just if, if they, the word or some of the way that we connect remind you of, but really and truly the, the religion, religion yeah. yeah, the religion we're talking about it being like Western Christianity, even, it's, it's before that even because it's truly more like Hebrew mysticism, which is actually, bef- you know, transcendent and before even the writing of the Torah, you know what I mean? Like we're just talking about human experiencing is really all we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And well, and then before the Torah, there's the, all the other ancient mm-hmm. books that all mention beings. Exactly. Right. Of light. So, yeah. The but yeah, we is, used. The filtering um, isn't the message. I, you know, the filtering isn't the truth. The filtering that, you know, through which you might be hearing it right now is not what the actual message yeah. of the truth is. And that's why I love, um, that's why, like, my, my main work is not to create people of faith around angels. Mm-hmm 
you know, and turn it into a religion. It's really about experience, experiencing the presence. You can start feeling them. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and you can start seeing, seeing the, the beautiful wake that they leave behind when they're supporting you in your life. So, uh, so, so yeah, it's really important that people have their own experience and make their own judgment on what an angel is and who they are, but you have to put it to a test. You have to spend diligent time, uh, daily working with these energies so that you can really see like how they impact you. So that really is what the, uh, the book's about. It's like experimenting is such a strong word for that because that is, that really keeps you in a timeless space to just experiment just like you, you know, for three days, talk to the angels as though they're real. And at one time I was talking when I was really, I was in this place where I was talking with my guides and I was speaking with my angels and I was like, um, okay, so I mean, really, though, do can I really live a life like this? Or I mean, everybody else believes that being afraid and scared and anxious, that that's actually how this life works. So I mean, really, <laughs> are you are, are you shitting me? Like I can actually just live without that. And they just kind of simply said to me, well, why not just try it? You can always pick that back up. You could you know how to be anxious. You got 30 some 40, whatever years being anxious. Why not try it for a little bit and see what happens. So that ex experimentation, I was like, uh -huh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you could always pick it back up. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah. You want to feel like shit? Go ahead. You know where that tool is. <laughs> yeah, no, you've been nailing it. Nailing it. You, yeah. Expert. You're a master at that. <laughs> Let's try something else. So Just try true. it. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's always about like experimentation. Yeah. So that's why I, you know, I, I create a lot of programs that require like a kind of a daily practice, super easy though, like 10 to 15 minutes invocation. And, yeah. and then uh, we do energy shift and energy healing and, and angel healing around stuff too because i think half the battle is just decluttering you're already mm -hmm. i think we're all already awesome on the inside we're already gifted you know beings of awesome mm -hmm. we just have to decrust from the the yeah. decades of bullshit totally wow i i'm just uh, so in love with the work that you're doing and how you're teaching people to just experiment to alchemize to use all the parts of themselves and allow it to be redeemed to something that's resourceful um, so you're, you're just so great. Thank you so much for this work that you're doing, Corinne, really, truly cool. and beautiful. You have, you have a workshop coming up in California. What else, uh, tell uh, folks anything else that you would like to share today? Yeah, well, the workshop is February 28th, the weekend of February 28th at 1440 Multiversity. Um, so that's going to be a three-day intuitive angel healing deep dive. So where is that located? Hmm. Where's Multiversity? Well, uh, it's up in Santa Cruz. Oh, okay, great. Oh, Santa Cruz yeah. is so beautiful. Santa Cruz Mountains. Yeah, it's all inclusive. It's 75 acres. Mm. Um, and there's pools and hot tubs and, and massage and stuff like that. So wow. especially for people who really need to go inward and start hearing the voice, getting their intuition down and really feeling um, a palpable difference in their in their healing abilities and, mm -hmm. and it, whether it's people who want to heal other people or heal just yourself, people are going to get everything they need in that three days. I mean, it's all, it's all it takes. Cause it's, you know, angels. Yeah. <laughs> so it's quantum. So they, <laughs> they move fast. So there's that. And then I also just really want to invite people to, to um, try, try the experiment mm. to, to do it. It's really, uh, I get emails all the time and messages on our, we have a Facebook group. So people can also join our Facebook group. It's called the seven day miracle challenge. And you'll see all kinds of testimonials going up about this, the wild stuff that happens for people. One, one woman, she's waiting for her book and she opens up the mailbox and there's two pieces of, there's two things in the, in her mailbox, the book and one envelope. And in that envelope was a check for, for for, I think it was like $14,998 that she didn't know she had coming to her. Wow. I love <laughs> it. Like, oh my gosh, I can pay my rent now. Cause she was all, you know, bad things were happening. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's I beautiful. <laughs> so it's so awesome because it keeps all of our kind of faith and like, oh yeah, angels are real. It's a constant reminder. Yes. So, um, so, but the book has really done some already some pretty cool cool things for for folks so yeah check it out if you're curious absolutely everyone do check out corinne grillo's book the angel experiment and uh the, the perhaps the retreat the workshop that she's talking about and her communities 
it, it's really been such a joy to connect with you and thank you for shining your light on, on our beautiful world and in this, oh, thank in this you. podcast. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. It's so, now I can always tell them when I'm around other angel people because my <laughs> angel senses, my, my feathers start like going, <laughs> they start getting wider and wider. <laughs> <laughs> the energetics behind here I feel like ah so it's so nice to connect with you well thank you and you as well well this has been a wonderful broadcast and so everyone check out Corinne Grillo and I look forward maybe we can maybe we can have another episode sometime next time that and if you're ever in Los Angeles I would love mm -hmm. to have you in studio it'd be really fun oh my gosh anytime that'd be so fun yeah I'll let you know <laughs> okay great well, everyone, this is that's our episode for today. Again, I encourage you to check out all of Corinne's information in the description, as well as the 2020 Intuitive Intensive taught by myself and Crystal Ann Compton and my Mystic Arts Academy twice monthly and uh, a weekly group meditation meetings. So I just love you all so much. Angel blessings to you all. Talk to your angels. And thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Mm -hmm.